can it really be done? Can I restore fitness levels to that of my younger self by using my mitochondrial stack? Let's find out. Motsi, is it really the holy grail? Improving physical performance while simultaneously slowing down aging. And to top that, it's not even banned by WADA. Hi guys, today we're going to be reviewing my stack for improving my mitochondrial function. I've been doing this for five weeks. Also, we're going to have a quick look at some of the extracts from Vigorous Steve's uh, video on a mitochondrial stack. If you've seen it, I'm sure you agree it's pretty damn comprehensive. And I think there's, there's a good way to just have a look at that and just, just some takeaways and things that you can do just to save money because as he pointed out, it can get very expensive. Vigorous Steve is obviously more of a bodybuilder, but this is one topic where our interests kind of overlap, where we're talking about longevity as well as obviously having strong muscles. But first I want to show you a little experiment I did the other day, just comparing a 2K run with my time back in 2009 when I last did it. I'm trying to think, my best time actually was on a 1% incline and that was six minutes 44. Here's a video of me doing Muay Thai back in 2007 and me boxing in 2009. I was about four to five kilos lighter than what I am now. Not very skilled, but cardio for days. Now let's compare my time right at the end of this cycle. I did a warm up previously, but in hindsight I should have just started the 2k run a couple of hundred meters in and my time would have been even better. So even with the bad start, my time is 14 seconds slower at seven minutes dead. And you've got to take into account the poor start and also I'm carrying five kilos extra mass. And so on top bad. of that, I do uh, way less okay. cardio than back then. I did say it's not very healthy doing this. And if you look at these readings, this is from that night following that run. So if you look at my heart rate variability, it's dropped massively. My um, resting heart rate has gone up. So uh, it's a bit of a shock to the system. You know, doing exercise is obviously good for you, but when you're pushing your body the absolute limit, then uh, that can actually go the other way. That's why people, you know, Olympians don't necessarily live a long time. It, it, it can be beneficial, but when you're pushing your body over the, you know, through boundaries, then you're more at risk of inflammation when you're pushing your body to that extreme. And the cycle consists of MOTC, and that's a mitochondrial derived peptide. I've done a dose of 10 milligrams. I do that once a week and also 5-amino-1-MQ, and I'm doing more of a moderate dose at 50 milligrams a day. MOTC, also known as mitochondrially encoded 12S ribosomal RNA. Now again, MOTC is a peptide derived from the mitochondria themselves. It plays an important role in metabolic function of the human cells also. It's an endogenous or endocrine hormone that the mitochondria produce that can actually diffuse into systemic circulation and potentiate some effects into other tissues of the body. It's interesting, I actually saw one of his old videos back from, I think it's 2021, where he'd come off all his PEDs and I forgot how thin he was in between that point. He looked completely different. The benefits of MOTC have actually been well documented, albeit that all of the studies that have been performed on MOTC have been in rodent models. So keep that in mind, all of the results that I've read show that MOTC treatment is actually highly promising. It's been shown that MOTC can have a beneficial effect on age-related diseases, including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, postmenopausal obesity, and even Alzheimer's. MOTC treatment could potentially reduce aging-related mitochondrial metabolic dysfunction. It's interesting, Steve was saying about uh, MOTC, you know, giving uh, you could get a little bit of redness and inflammation around the injection site. I've had none of that, so I'm quite happy. I noticed his dosing protocol is either between 2.5 and 5 milligrams and doing that twice a week. Um, I've never seen any MOTC that comes in at 2.5 vials. And the thing with MOTC is it's a very unstable peptide. I have heard um, some people like John Francois Tremblay, the peptide expert that's coming on my podcast, he doesn't think it's as unstable as what people say. I've heard people talking about even like you know, after five minutes, uh, you know, it can start degrading that quickly. And that's a little bit of a myth. He, he had some in, a, in a, a fridge for like a month and he said there, there was a little bit of degradation, but nothing severe. I've had doctors say, uh, waiting even a few hours after reconstituting the peptide, that it's basically junk. I think that's a little bit extreme. There is some truth to it in that, uh, so if you put it in the fridge and then that fridge is being opened, 
you know, 10 times a day, so you're getting light exposure on it and things like that, maybe being shocked, then it could degrade faster than, than what uh, John Francois reported. Let's say half of this stack is actually improving mitochondrial function and the other half is mitigating the reactive oxygen species through antioxidant intake. You need both for everything to work because if you upregulate mitochondrial functioning and you don't take care of the free radicals, you're basically killing off your mitochondria and the cells from within because now you get DNA damage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's definitely not what you want. 100% agree with Steve here. So on top of having a great diet full of uh, vitamins and flavonoids, having something like uh, reishi mushrooms can really boost your intake of antioxidants. Because increasing the mitochondria is like turning up the dial in your body and so you're gonna get more reactive oxygen species going on. And this is why you wouldn't wanna be on it all year round, Motsu. I talked about 5-amino-1 MQ in my previous uh, stack video and it being an NMMT inhibitor, so uh, helping with the, in the NAD salvage pathway. 5 amino one mq solely acts within adipose tissue, preserving nicotinamides for the NAD plus selfish pathway, which increases overall nicotinamide mononucleotides, NAD plus, NADH, NADP, and NADPH concentrations within adipose tissue, all resulting in an increase in overall fat metabolism within the adipose tissue, allowing you to lose body fat easier, especially at the later stages of contest prep. Speaking of which, uh, he talks about M&M, &M, he's on quite a high dose. And it brings us to nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, one of the more expensive supplements in this mitochondrial support stack, but it's essential to run it because this is where I notice the most amount of benefits. Now I've supplemented between 250 to 1000 milligrams of NMN per day, that's either with NAD plus administrations or without it. Personally, I take 175 milligrams NMN with each meal over the day. I myself, I do that all year round, but I do 300 milligrams. But then I also top it up with around 30 milligrams of niacin. And the niacin, that, that does help with NAD levels. Particularly if you do exercise in a fasted state, it helps with the NAD salvage pathway. And this is what this channel's about, is just finding those uh, supplements that really work. Because yeah, you could really go down a rabbit hole with this kind of stuff and spend loads of money and you could do a quarter of what you're doing and still get most of those benefits. So here's my current supplement stack. And if you look in the bottom third, you can see the MOTC and 5-amino-1-MQ. So it works out to around 208 pounds. Bear in mind, for peptides, I get like a 20% discount, me, myself working in the wellness trade. A lot of these other supplements, I get a 30% discount, so these costs aren't reflected for everyone. So the longevity supplement, that contains 300 milligrams of MNN, as well as resveratrol and a few other polyphenols. So if you were to add it to the Motsi and 5-amino and also the L-carnitine and ubiquinol, if you put them all together, it's around 300 pounds take into account needles and postage. So this is at the lower end of the spectrum of what Steve was talking about. And one final thing to notice is I've not even included the niacin because it's just so fucking cheap. And in my humble opinion, I feel like this stack gets most of those benefits of that thousand dollar plus stack he's talking about. Please help out the channel by checking out my company, Epic Genetics. It's what funds the research for you guys and can mean I can bring on further interesting guests onto the Healthspan Optimization podcast just about to start. Here's an interesting case study with a client of mine who had a brain age 4.6 years older than her chronological age. And even just with these simple lifestyle interventions, we're very confident we're going to make a big difference to that uh, biological age. And a great example here is if she'd supplemented choline, it would have had no benefit on her brain. Age. So gene testing really does pay for itself in the long term. Think of your DNA as the hardware and epigenetics as the software. Every choice you make has an impact on your health, wellness and aging. Here at Epic Genetics we're there to guide you through to make those right choices for your genes. It's common for people to put more time into the maintenance of their car with an MOT test, yet when it comes to their health there's no yearly checkup just waiting for something to break rather than prevention. By doing an epigenetics test, you can find out the risk of certain diseases and cancers, dial in your athletic performance. Maybe you're aging your body at an accelerated rate or a poor absorber of a particular vitamin. The list is endless. 
I keep harking on about baseline, but yeah, it's fucking important. So with regards to mitochondria, you want to make sure that you're not having a lot of sugar in your diet because sugar is toxic to your mitochondria. As Steve didn't mention this, but I think it's just maybe because it's obvious. Another great thing for mitochondrial biogenesis is cold exposure, like a cold shower, ice baths, things like that. And that's what I've been doing, like a one minute shower daily, or even the odd outdoor swim. <laughs> I've run metformin on this mitochondrial support stack. And even though I don't really like metformin because it reduces my overall workout performance the next day in the gym, or if I use it every day, my workout performance basically goes down to 75%, which is certainly not what I want. Yeah, I definitely agree with him on the metformin. I do that maybe on average once a week because it really does blunt the effects or the benefits rather of exercise. I quickly want to highlight Burberry. Not only does it increase its overall insulin sensitivity, it could potentially act as a D-peptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitor and um, prevent the breakdown of growth factors like insulin, IGF-1, epidermal growth factor or growth hormone or reaching hormone, increasing growth hormone levels downstream. Now, Burberry is a very versatile compound. It was shown to increase sirtuin 1 levels and contributes to mitochondrial biogenesis. But apparently, long-term, high dosing can also cause mitochondrial toxicity. And I've been cutting down on my berberine too. I've been having one that's been standardized up to 7,500 milligrams. It's a pretty damn fucking high dose. And now I don't, I don't do it every day. It's just on those cheat days where you're trying to cancel out that big spike in insulin. Another option instead of MOTC is the peptide Humanin, which is again another mitochondrial-derived peptide. And uh, humanin has its own benefits, say, with, uh, say, misfolded proteins. And that's something as you get older, your cells, when they reproduce, you can get these misfolded proteins. So humanin helps with that. Since finishing my five amino and uh, MOTSI stack, I've uh, started acetyl l carotene and also uh, ubiquinol that Steve was mentioning. Um, the one, one thing to note is for I'm, I'm not at high risk of coenzyme Q10 deficiency, but obviously it still has benefits. And for, yeah, I've um, I've already been noticing the the, the the benefit of those two combined as a pre-workout with my L-arginine. And I'm just doing an oral dose of um, acetyl l carnitine at uh, 1,000 milligrams and 200 milligrams of ubiquinol. This is combined with 2,000 milligrams of uh, arginine alpha ketogatorate. I could go higher with the L-carnitine, but because it's an all-round year, year thing now, I, d I just think you end up spending loads of money and then the actual benefits, the higher you go, they go down. And obviously it can get toxic for the liver if you go too high with it. And that's the idea. You have certain supplements that you do all year round that give you a, like a healthy boost of mitochondria. And then you do some of these peptides like the Mozzi or um, compounds like 5-amino and you do them you know, with as cycles. So you get more of a super physiological increase in mitochondrial function for short periods of time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.